1992 Olympic Winter Games. Next, CBS Sports presents the NCAA Basketball Championship. Good evening. It's wonderful to join you in America's heartland for this NCAA Championship game. Tonight, one squad will take home the trophy as the best men's collegiate basketball team in the nation. But before we crown these new champions, let's pause to acknowledge some other American heroes, the men and women of our armed forces. They showed us that bravery, duty, and love of country are more than words. And in so doing, they liberated a country abroad and transformed a nation at home. And so as we watch this NCAA tournament, it's fitting that we not only salute the players and the coaches, but also the outstanding servicemen and women of our country. Thank you, enjoy this wonderful game, and may God bless you all. small towns and big towns to the final four city of Indianapolis. Tonight from the Hoosier Dome, the 1991 National Championship game, Kansas against Duke. I'm Jim Nance. It's great to have you with us on College Basketball's Biggest Night. Kansas has won two championships. Duke is looking for its elusive first round. Now let me show you the road to the Monday night final. For Duke, double-digit victories in the first four games and then the stunning victory over defending champion the Battle of Las Vegas on Saturday. For Kansas, out of the southeast, consecutive victories over Indiana, Arkansas, and North Carolina to make it to the final. It's my pleasure to be with my partner, Billy Packer, tonight. 
Billy Christian Leitner has just been sensational in this tournament, but tonight he faces a player he's very familiar with, Mark Randall of Kansas. He is familiar with him. They both were on our national team last summer, and surprisingly, Mark Randall was the starter, Leitner the backup. Randall, a blue collar worker, and the thing about him, he figures out how to win. You know, on Saturday, Duke did a great job against the three for UNLV. Why don't you diagram that for us? Okay, it was Anderson Hunt for UNLV. Tonight it'll be Terry Brown. And watch how Duke defends beyond the three-point line. Brian Davis now making sure on the pass that Anderson Hunt has to put the ball on the floor. Will not let him get off the standstill three. Now the ball goes back out to the point. And even with the great Larry Johnson down in the low box, which was going to be a problem for Duke, you'll notice Davis does not fall in to help out. He stays out there with an eye on Anderson Hunt to make sure he doesn't get off the three. Finally, the ball goes inside. He stays out there again. Now the ball goes inside. Great defensive play by Leitner. They will not give up the three. All right, Billy, the Packer points for the championship game. Okay, 40 winks. We had Leitner and Hurley played 40 minutes in the game. They didn't get a lot of sleep. Could be advantage of Kansas. Point, counterpoint. Two great point guards in this game. Which one gets the advantage early is going to be a key. Super subs. Both teams come off the bench with great play on the bench. We'll see tonight. That could be a big advantage for the club that gets the best. And Blue Devils. Will Duke be too high up to try to win one for Coach K? All right, Billy. Folks, we'll set your starting lineups from the Hoosier Dome. Kansas and Duke coming up on CBS. CBS Sports coverage of the 1991 NCAA Basketball Championship game is sponsored by today's Chevrolet, who invites you to see why more people are winning with the heartbeat of America. Pizza Hut and their new MVP four-topping pizza. And by Nike, who reminds you to just do it. The Kansas Jayhawks and the Duke Blue Devils. Now let's meet the starting lineups. For Kansas at forward, a 6'6 junior from Santa Ana, California, number 24, Alonzo Jamison. For Duke at forward, a 6'7 freshman from Reston, Virginia, number 33, Grant Hill. For Kansas at forward, a 6'7 senior from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, number 32, Mike Maddox. For Duke and forward, a 6'6 senior from Clifton Park, New York, number 22, Greg Kubek. For Kansas at center, a 6'9 senior from Englewood, Colorado, number 42, Mark Rendell. For Duke at center, a 6'11 junior from Angola, New York, number 32, Christian Lichner. For Kansas at guard, a 6'2 senior from Clyde, New York, number 3, Terry Brown. For Duke at guard, a 6'4 sophomore from Lancaster, Texas, number 12, Thomas Hill. For Kansas at guard, a 5'11 sophomore from Reseda, California, number 30, Adonis Jordan. For Duke at guard, a 6'0 sophomore from Jersey City, New Jersey, number 11, Bobby Hurley. And the coaches for Kansas in his third season, Roy Williams. For Duke in his 11th season, Mike Krzyzewski. All right, Frank Fallon, thank you. Opening tip coming up for the national championship. Kansas against Duke. Your championship game officials, Mickey Crowley from Holbrook, New York, Charles Raines from Fremont, California, and Jim Burr from Albany, New York. The alternate, Tom Harrington. Kansas in blue controls the opening tip. The championship game is underway. Back in a backcourt violation. Right away, Adonis Jordan was not on the front court. Jim, if he had kept running, he might have been all right, but when he took that little jump step over the top, it drew the attention of the official. So Bobby Hurley and Duke now set the offense for the first time. And as expected, straight man to man. Randall on Leitner. They get it to Leitner on the baseline. Back out to Hurley. Two back to Hurley. It'll be some battle inside, Leitner and Randall. Swinging it around, Kubek takes a three-pointer. The senior co-captain playing in his fourth Final Four. Gets Duke started with a three. And straight man the other way as well. Grand Hill, Jamison, that's going to be a tough matchup physically. Randall in the lane and a foul called on Leitner. 
his first course. So Randall uh, doing a little work in the lane and drawing some attention from Leitner. Jim, very interesting. You know, Leitner has been able to play defense in the low post area and has stayed out of foul trouble. Now Randall, who can step outside and cause problems because now Leitner will have to play him as a forward and potentially could get in some foul trouble. The potential switch there would put Leitner on Jameson if he gets in some foul trouble. Are they back? Back of the rim, the first one, Billy, and this is the real trouble spot for Kansas. Amazing, Jim. This club, one of the best field goal shooting percentage teams in the country, and yet a terrible foul shooting team, meaning that they work so well within their offense to get shots. Perimeter shooting has not been a big plus for them. Thomas Hill, he'll take the jumper. And Maddox with the rebound. Watch Thomas Hill on Terry Brown, trying to keep him away from hitting one of those three early. Traveling on Randall. He got caught. That was a great switch by Grant Hill, dropping down inside off of Jamison. You can see Randall wants to put the ball on the floor, forcing Leitner to play him from out front. Hill wide open on the screen. Stuck in the baseline, back out to Kubek. Now it's Grant Hill, a standing freshman. In the Leitner somehow, squeezes the shot off the glass. The follow by Kubek. He has all five of Duke's points. Amazing that Kubek was able to get inside an excellent blockout situation by Kansas. Watch the nifty point guard here, Adonis Jordan for Kansas. He's had an outstanding tournament. Maddox over to Randall, who's touched the ball a lot here early and up the glass. Too strong. Leitner tracks down the rebound. Kubek with a great slough, and he's all right. He'll call. Oh! oh, can you believe he got that high? Jim, that ball was thrown to the point that it was going out of bounds. I don't know how he got up there to get it. I never thought he would save it, much less dunk it. That was a David Thompson type dunk from yesteryear. Crowd is still ooing over that one. Terry Brown with a three-pointer. Oh, push off inside. Of course, in the days that Thompson played on the college level, you could not dunk it. He would go up there and save it. Look at this play. Incredible. The freshman, Grand Hill, suffered two key injuries this year. Broken nose and a hip pointer kept him out. And other than that, he has had some season. Kubek was called on the first foul, Billy, in Kansas now, trailing 7-1. On the switch, Leitner now on Brown. See if he can get out of that matchup, because it's not a good one for him. Maddox drops it in the Brown, who flips it in. Terry Brown had a really struggling performance on Saturday, only one of ten from the floor, now one of two in this one. Well, with all the screens that Kansas set, it will not be unusual for Brown to be able to shake himself loose and maybe get on somebody he can get free. Kubek driving past Maddox. The ball squirts free, picked up by Randall. Adonis Jordan motors. Grant Hill with the rebound. Randall came flying through. Notice now Leitner taking his time getting down court. Kansas does a great job getting back on defense. Look at Hurley penetrating and dishing to Hill. Jamison got knocked down a little bit by Hill, never in the play defensively. Kubek fronting Randall. Jordan is stuck momentarily, and he traveled. He lifted his pivot foot. Third turnover against the Jayhawks. Let's keep going to that bench early. We talked about the bench being important for both teams, and it looks like Mike Krzyzewski wants to give that early blow to his team with this lead. Leitner will rest, and Crawford Palmer and Antonio Lang come in. So three changes for Duke. Hill, Kubek, and Leitner as Thomas Hill sit with the three new subs. Last touch, they say, by Brian Davis. Terry Great. Brown forced it. Great hustle by Brown as he just gave up his body to tip that ball. Nobody on Brown right now as Davis will be the man. But Brown's going to be shielded tonight by two outstanding defensive players. Interchangeable, Davis and Thomas Hill. Maddox back out to Jamison. Jamison spinning, gets it back out to Randall. 
Randall into the lane oh. and up and in. I said, Jim, he just figures out a way to win. We haven't seen him take a running hook shot yet in the tournament. Barry's the first one he tries. Going to be the all-time field goal percentage player at Kansas, topping Danny Manning's career mark. And Grant Hill traveled. He was waiting for Lang to drive to the hoop, and he got caught with the violation. First time out on the court, Duke with the early edge. Bring home the ball, Darryl. Well, it's all come down to this. 60 million trillion fans are waiting for this one last play. You know what's going to Darryl Jenkins. He moves left, he moves right, he's double teamed, triple teamed, the whole team team. Whoa! Now, the only thing between him and the basket is his big, ugly brother, Wesley. He gives him the old shake and bake. His mom and dad are jumping up and down. Boy, is his brother jealous. He looks at the clock. Four seconds, three, two, he leaps, he shoots, and... He was fouled! He was fouled! For all of you who ever dreamed of playing big-time basketball, Pizza Hut and the NCAA would like to say thanks for making it great. Well, Duke has the record for the most trips to the Final Four without a championship. Eight previous trips without the title. This is their ninth. Houston, if Duke wins tonight, would be the next on that, uh, well, that dubious distinction of having <laughs> Your alma trips. mater, yeah. Jim. Relax a little yeah. bit. Guy Lewis brought him five times, however. Inside, Alonzo Jameson oh! missed the easy one. Leitner and Maddox fighting for the rebound. Good save to get it to Davis. Second great play by Grant Hill in terms of his explosive leaping ability. Hurley tried to bounce it into Hill. A tie-up situation. It remains Duke's basketball on the possession arrow. Possession arrow for you. you can see Mike Krzyzewski put in subs just to give Leitner that, that small uh, about two-minute break there, including the timeout. Leitner came back in during the timeout, as did Kubek. Hurley underneath. Out to Leitner. So far, Jordan and Hurley have been a Mexican standoff. Neither one able to initiate much offensively. Good back now in a jam. Good overplay. Defense. Maddox all over. Got a hand on it. Brown makes the steal as well. Nobody screened away and stepped out to give a passing lane. Lobbing it in to Randall. Good pass by Maddox. Randall scores. Five points for Randall. Jayhawks within two. Jim, it's nice when you've got a man 6'8 that can step outside because he gets a good angle on that pass. Hill, interior pass to Leitner. Foul called on Maddox. Now let's get a report now from Leslie Visser. Jim, right before the game started, Kansas trainer Mark Cairns rubbed a great deal of analgesic on the lower back of forward Mike Maddox, who you know has a chronic lower disc problem. Roy Williams said right before the game that Mike is particularly sore from having to play, if you'll pardon the expression, back-to-back. -back. Jim? Ooh. <laughs> well, Mike Maddox will, will rest, and it is difficult for this young man whose career will close out tonight. He played on the 88 title team, did Maddox. Now Leitner will attempt two. And we have a young man here that we talked about becoming rapidly one of the great NCAA players of all time in the tournament. When you start looking at his stats, he now has passed Oscar Robertson in free throws made in, in tournament history and also Kareem Jabbar in free throws attempted. And he's got another year to go. In fact, he passed Jabbar with the two free throws at the end of the Vegas game. Kansas picking up their offense now a little higher, looking for some lobs. And with Scott in the game, remember how explosive he was against North Carolina. Brown hits the three. First time today he was not guarded by either Davis or Thomas Hill. Bill McCaffrey is in for the Blue Devils. And a major factor for Kansas if he can get loose. Made 11 threes against North Carolina State earlier this year and only one for 11 against North Carolina. So it shows that he doesn't mind taking them even when he's not hitting them. Leitner, right over Randall. Look at the soft touch by Leitner. And you couldn't have asked for better defense than what Randall put on him. Bumped him going across the lane and had a hands up in good position on the shot. 
Yeah, you're right, Billy. ACC fans uh, familiar with Terry Brown. Off Beautiful to the good start. Here's Scott just in. Oh, oh, he missed the easy one. The tip once. Randall again. <laughs> Woodbury inside. Put it on the floor. And a tie-up situation. Kansas basketball. Is there something about that rim, Jim? Remember uh, during yeah. the semifinals, it, in that particular case, it was North Carolina that could not get those close-in shots to fall. Thomas Hill in for Duke. Let's go to James Brown. All right, Jimmy, without affecting the offensive continuity, Coach Mike Krzyzewski is trying to neutralize the front line of Kansas, specifically Jamison and Mark Randall, by going inside to work the big guys. Let's go back to Jimmy. Foul from behind on Hurley as uh, Randall found Adonis Jordan underneath. It is kind of amazing. In the semifinals, Kansas had two major problems in their victory. One was free throw shooting. The other was inboundings the ball. And, and regardless of whether it was under the basket or on the sideline, all kinds of problems. That time executed very well. Get some points out of it. Jordan only 6 of 13 free throw shooting against Carolina. Here's a young man who played his first two years of uh, high school basketball, as you see Jamison on the bench. Donis Jordan played his first two years of high school ball in New York, where he idolized Pearl Washington. Then he moved to California for his last two years. Played high school ball at Brett Saberhagen's high school. Tunstall comes in, replacing the shooter, Jordan. Now, it's time for Bobby Hurley to start to penetrate. As Jordan goes out, who did a good job on him, let's see if Hurley doesn't try to take Tunstall a little bit. There he goes. It's up the hill. Leitner now back outside sees McCaffrey. Davis with Scott on him. Cuts to the hole. Beautiful. Gets the spin off the glass. Ryan Davis with a great semifinal game. Coming right back offensively. Showing he's more than just a defensive stopper. He had 15 in that game against the running Rebs. And a foul called away from the ball. Thomas Hill trying to keep Scott out from the low post. Here we'll see that drive. Excellent penetration. Stays in the air, and then the perfect rotation on that shot for the layup. Well, that was Hill's first foul, Thomas Hill. Four on Duke, and Maddox comes back in. Jamison as well, as Brown and Randall get a rest. Roy Williams going to match up Mike Krzyzewski, trying to keep people fresh. Here's your problem, inbounding the ball, at last they get it to Jamison. Different philosophy here by Duke and the fact that they play everybody out high even if the man's not a three-point shooter. They want to put pressure on that ball. Woodbury. That's a kick. Bounced it right off the foot of Leitner. Kansas controls. Bobby Hurley would have had that one on a steal. Two uh, super subs you alluded to in the opening, Billy, are in the game. Richard Scott for Kansas, who will inbound. And, of course, the Brian Davis, we've already seen him excel tonight. Leitner almost stole it. Maddox saves it. Good pass underneath. Ah! Scott missed the easy one. Good block out by Davis. He's got two men all alone, but just couldn't release the ball. Leitner wants it. Hurley goes to Hill instead. Back out to Hurley. Sets up the three with the feet and nails it. This young man has really come on as a ball player since February. His thought process is so good right now. Duke's largest lead, a seven-point lead for the Blue Devils. Scott in the lane. Back of the rim. McCaffrey underneath. Had it taken away by Scott. Scott just too strong for McCaffrey inside. And when we saw Scott go down in practice on Friday, there was a question whether he'd even be eligible to play in terms of a, what looked like a very bad ankle problem. Push-off called against Maddox. Second on Maddox. We've got a timeout on the court. Duke by five. The Hoosier Dome in Indianapolis. Jim Nance and Billy Packer, James Brown and Leslie Visser with us as well. Duke with the five-point lead on seven of nine shooting to start, including six in a row, a current string. It's Duke's basketball at midcourt after the foul on Maddox. But Jim, when you shoot that well and you look up at the scoreboard and you're only up five, you know you're playing a Kansas type of game. This team just stays right there. There's the double team. Hurley's got to keep that dribble alive when he sees it coming. 
Duke snaps it around quickly. And Thomas Hill is free. Comes up short. Late in a run underneath. He was hacked. Oh, it looked like Randall had all ball that time if they call it on him. It is on Randall. His first and team foul number three. Jim, one of the things, particularly out in the front court area there, you cannot pick up that dribble. Bobby Hurley has to keep it alive when he sees the double team coming at him. Then people can make the quick break with the dribble. He can hit the pass or drive through that double team and find himself with a three-on-one opportunity. Leitner with two. This season, Leitner had 17 double-doubles, points and rebound games. That compares to Danny Ferry's 10 double-doubles. Seven more than Ferry back in 89 when Ferry was the National Player of the Year. And it shouldn't surprise us he's doing so well from the free throw line. He was led the Atlantic Coast Conference of free throw shooting last year. Almost a pickoff by Davis. Randall sets it up for Maddox. Way too strong. And off the hands of Thomas Hill. Let's get a report now from James Brown. All right, Jimmy, staying on top of every statistical disadvantage, Coach Mike Krzyzewski told his guys we're being out-rebounded on the offensive glass. If you can't get to the ball, get a body on a man, tap the ball to one of your men, we're being out-rebounded. Let's go back to Jimmy. Kansas is a 5 for 15 from the floor. Jordan, all alone, three-pointer. Excellent screening on the inside. Not surprising, Kansas has out-rebounded everybody they've played in this tournament. And without having a true power player, they just all rebound so well. Good defense by Jamison. Leitner tried to force it inside to Thomas Hill, and Jamison reached around. Got Maddox open. But Leitner fronted him. Now there. Brian Davis way out ahead. His teammates don't see him. But Thomas Hill not looking. Now that's the second time that Duke had a break available and didn't look for it. And so far, they have had no easy ones on that break, with the exception of the great hill, hill dunk on that long pass. Now McCaffrey with the ball inside the Laker. Swings it over. Hurley, three-point try. And out of bounds. First missed three for Duke. Two for three now. He had to make a tough catch. He wasn't squared up to take that jump. Randall quickly inside. Sees Maddox. The high-low feed that Kansas uses with either Maddox to Randall or, or the other way around is tough to defend because that good angle a tall man has. Kansas within two. Hurley's waiting for Randall to come out at him. Randall really fronting Leitner. Jamison showing what a good defender he is. He did the job on day from Arkansas. Perfect lob. Leitner missed it, but he follows and draws the foul. I'll tell you, Kansas puts so many bodies on you down on the inside. Jim, the, the stats for this club are so hard to understand. I mean, it's the most difficult stat sheet that I've ever seen for a college team. They have no shot blockers, yet they're a great defensive team. You know, they have no shooters, yet they're a great percentage shooting team. Uh, it, it, it's just an unusual style that they have. As an example, Vegas this year blocked 266 shots. You look at Kansas as a team, they only blocked 76 shots. Their leading shot blockers got 15. I mean, that's unheard of. Billy, the graphic pointed out that uh, Randall now has two. So two on Randall, two on Maddox. Leitner returns to the line. Woodbury has come in for the Jayhawks. So the lineup for Kansas, Woodbury, Jordan, Brown, Randall, and Scott. You know, the, the record for block shots in NCAA tournament in just four games, David Robinson had 23. That's more than any Kansas player has had in the entire year. Here's Crawford Palmer in for the Duke Blue Devils. Yeah, the young man with the 15 blocks to lead Kansas rarely plays, David Johanning. That shows they're playing great position defense. Over to Jordan. Randall's got a mismatch. Yeah, I had Hurley on him. No foul called as he uses it, uses the glass. Seven points for Randall. So far, Kansas doing a great job running their offense to the point they're getting switches by Duke that set up mismatches on the inside. Grant Hill takes the step to the hole, whistle, and a foul called against Kansas. And I think it's on Woodbury. Now there you can see the mismatch. Randall recognizes it, and so do his, do his teammates. And he takes it right to the hoop. And there's that blue-collar worker again. There he is, Mark Randall. Foul was on Woodbury, indeed. 
Inbounding it to McCaffrey. McCaffrey with 12 points off the bench for this team, a season average. Here he is. Good shooter. That's Nails that one. Did you notice the nice bounce on the shot after he released it? Gave him that little extra follow-through. Billy, they ruled out a two. Four-point lead for Duke. Watch the screening inside to create some of those openings. Too strong for Woodbury. Kubek picks it off. McCaffrey again. Won't be able to shoot it over Randall, so he brings it back out. Hurley drives, stops, and hits it. Bobby Hurley very seldom shoots that jumper off the dribble. It's either a standstill or he goes all the way. Good pull up. Five points for Hurley. Now Terry Brown with a two-pointer. Every time Terry Brown has found himself tonight not being guarded by Davis or Hill, he scored. Grant Hill thinks he can take Woodbury. Trying to take it now for the second time. Rattles out. And nobody on the boards for Duke. Leitner's on the bench. Duke was out-rebounded by 14 against uh, UNLV, but still managed to win. On the blocks, they have Scott. Scott working on Kubek. Oh, Kubek got a hand on it. Kansas still controls. We have official, official timeout on the court. Duke with a four-point advantage. Uh, thus far, with Duke leading by four and 7.36 before the half, Duke 60% from the floor, but Kansas with the advantage on the offensive rebounding stat sheet, six to three. Jim, Duke goes to his zone. Uh, they've got to keep their eye on Brown now. Tunstall's in for Kansas. They swing it around to Tunstall. They'd like to go all the way cross court to Brown. Way too high the pass for Brown, but he's able to save it. He'd scare me to death if he get in the zone. Good Leitner. steal. Leitner got a hand on it. Now, Hurley trying to race it ahead. Surveys the court and goes to Grant Hill on a wing. To Leitner. Skips it over to Hurley. Back inside. Stolen away by Jamison. And it's Kansas basketball. Let's get a report from behind the bench with Leslie Visser. Jim, in the last timeout, Roy Williams told his team that in the half-court offense, he wanted them to pass the ball five or six times, crisp passes, and when they doubled down on freshman Richard Scott, he was to kick it out quickly. Jim? All right, we'll keep a track on that. 2-3 zone, the thing to watch. Thomas Hill reached in, knocked it out of bounds. Now what what uh, Roy Williams upset about there are lob passes against the zone. He wants crisp passing, and, but what's happening right now, Kansas guys aren't creating a, a passing lane for the man that's got the ball. So consequently, he's got to throw it over the defender. Just the lob pass. Sure. A couple of dangerous ones already. Tunstall now, off the dribble. <laughs> Comes back out to Brown. Jamison sees a hole. There he is. Brown, three-pointer. Oh. Jamison on a great look. He took the whole zone with him when he split. Ten points for Terry Brown. Putting the Jayhawks within one. Hurley. Hunstall from behind. Got a piece of the arm. His first and team foul number six. James Brown with a report. All right, Jim, co-tailing on a point that Billy Packer made at the top of the show, fatigue for Duke is, in fact, a real factor to consider, especially Christian Leitner. We've been watching him. He's been playing soft in the blocks at times. Mike Krzyzewski is keeping a quick eye on him. When he pulls him out, they're hoping that he recuperates quickly. Let's go back to Jim. All right, James. Hurley left open. Don't do that now. Maybe last year, but not this year right. with Hurley. Kansas went to the zone. Now there goes Brown finding an opening again. He's open. Sets it up. Oh, Leitner. Not this time. Good rebound by Thomas Hill. Duke on the break. Hurley goes to the middle. Bounce pass to Grant Hill. Lost it momentarily. But Thomas Hill's outside for a three. Thomas Hill has not been hitting yet. Kubek and Brown tie up, but Duke will retain possession on the possession arrow. Thomas Hill has yet to get on track. That shot that you take at the top of the key coming down in the break like that is best to go follow through right on into the in towards the basket. And he tried to go up and straight down. Hill 0 for 3 so far. A major score for him, not getting out of the blocks yet. 
And here's the zone. Hill, in fact, is their number two scorer, Thomas Hill. Jamison out front, a very good defender to have on the point of his own. Kubek, three-pointer short. Look at that. was fouled as he had possession of the rebound. Foul called on Jamison. And that'll put Duke on the line with a one-and-one. One. That's the seventh team foul on Kansas, first on Jamison. We'll have the Chevrolet player of the game at the end of this one tonight in conjunction with the award. Chevrolet donates $1,000 to the general scholarship fund of each school. One and one for Leitner. And Jim, you can see what's going to happen right now. Crawford Palmer coming in for Leitner. So any time that Mike Krzyzewski can get a little working room score-wise, he's wanting to put him on the bench to save that fatigue factor that we've been talking about from setting in. Leitner has uh, attempted all seven of Duke's free throws, and he's made them all. And Jim, one of the reasons that the fatigue could set in is the fact that Duke didn't get out of here until about midnight, and probably didn't get the bat till three to four. Here comes Crawford Palmer in. Whereas, remember la the other day, Kansas left this arena when it was just halftime of the Duke UNLV game, so they got two full nights of sleep in, Duke only won. Jamison turning around with Hill on him. Grant Hill in the lane. In and out. Grant Hill gets the rebound. Foul on Maddox. That's number three. Now that's a technique that Kansas used. When you get a defensive rebound, they attack it, so you can't make a crisp outlet pass. So Maddox with three, and Kirk Wagner now comes in for him. And what that hurts, Kansas, uh, not only defensively with all his experience, but also the great passer that he is from the top of the key. Duke really moving to the foul. Grand Hill, Grand Hill, a freshman. He had attended Final Fours in the past as a spectator with his father. Of course, Calvin Hill, the former Dallas Cowboy, and now vice president of the Baltimore Warriors. Missing the one and one. Five minutes to go in the half. Back to man-to-man. -man. Wagner was held by Davis. Great positioning and the perfect angle to get that 45-degree pass on into the post. Five team fouls on Duke. Kansas will inbound with Wagner. Screen across. Duke stays in the zone now. Jamison hasn't well, with got Brown, his game going so far, Billy. Well, Here with, he is. With Brown out of the game, it doesn't. Ex the, the defense is not extended quite as so much because of his three-point shooting ability. So you see Kansas working it down low, trying to get something on the box. There it is. Into Randall. He's posting up Palmer, and he scores it. Now, Palmer just did not get to the spot in the zone. He knew exactly what Randall was trying to do to him and let it happen. Nine for Remarkable Randall. Early wisely keep, keeping the dribble alive. Grant Hill. Over to McCaffrey. Takes the shot with Woodbury on him and he made it. Billy McCaffrey coming in and playing very well in the semifinals and uh, equally well here tonight. Offensive foul called against Kansas. Alonzo Jamison, his second. Jamison normally so quick with that move and powerful with his dribble move and usually under control that time uh, just couldn't hold back. Getting some foul trouble here with Maddox three, Jamison two. And Randall and has Randall two. two. And they bring in Richard Scott taking out Kirk Wagner. So on the floor for the Jayhawks, Woodbury and Scott, Randall, Jordan, and Jamison. And Kansas sets up their 1-3-1 half-court trap. Something that Duke should be ready for. They've got to make the zone run a little bit before Long. they attack for the jump. Long pass to McCaffrey, back out to Grant Hill. Hurley nice. sets up McCaffrey. Open three-pointer. Nice. That is as well as you can play against a half-court trap. Move the ball side to side, make the zone run, and then get the three. Randall with a three. Good back. 
How about that? Pretty versatile, isn't he? Comes up with big plays time after time, just when his team is ready to have a problem. 12 points for Randall. You notice Roy Williams gets out of the 1-3-1 trap. Ryan Davis. McCaffrey didn't jump for that one. He was cutting to the yeah. basket and was off balance. 3-10 before the half. Duke looking for its first championship, leading by six. Next Saturday, the battle for the wrestling crowd. Next Sunday, Rocket Ishmael competes for the indoor track title, the NCAA Championships, this weekend. Christian Leitner is shuttling in and out, Billy. We saw him check in with the scores table as they broke for the timeout. Well, what Mike Krzyzewski realized, Christian Leitner played a very tough 40 minutes against UNLV. We talked about the lack of rest in, in, in the interim period here. So Mike Krzyzewski's trying to sit him down whenever he can get a working margin score-wise and hold him out as long as possible. David Johannings in for Kansas. Three-pointer by Brown off the mark. Kubek fighting for the rebound and took basketball. He's going to report from Leslie Visser. Jim, in the last time out, Roy Williams addressed a couple of aspects of the offense. He told Brown, get us a three. He told the offense he wanted more movement. He said, I'm preaching passing. And he also said, in driving, keep the ball in front of you. Jim? Speaking of threes, Mark Randall's a moment before was his first career three. Tried to go inside the Leitner, and a foul called from behind on Woodbury. Big break for Duke because that was not a good pass to the post. And Mike Krzyzewski looks at Billy McCaffrey and says, no need to force it inside. And he's absolutely correct on that one. There's another Jayhawk with two, and uh, that's 10 on Kansas. So Leitner will shoot two with them in the double bonus. How about Randall hitting his first career three? He had said, I'm going to come here. Um, my career, of course, ends in Indianapolis at the college level, but I'm going to walk away with one before it's all said and done. That's nine for nine from Leitner, and Jim picking up on that, as I said at the top of the show. Randall just figures out a way to beat you. Now, why would he make the three or even take the three now? You know, I mean, here you had a tight situation. Duke with his largest lead at the time. You figure he goes with the offense. The kid just figures out ways to win. Patrick Ritchie has come in. Leitner good again. And 12 for Leitner. Eight point Duke advantage. Two and a half before the half. Oh, good move by Leitner to attack Joanning outside. Got it in the Scott, however. Good move off the glass. That was worth the gamble. You have a new player coming in, not real fresh. Leitner tried to attack him and backfired, but still a pretty good move. Leitner trying to take advantage of the sub. Johanning. Oh, Johanning right got a block. block. That's, That's the man the you talked about. Yeah. That's his 16th block on the year. That's the top mark. The intimidator. On Kansas. Now Richie in a jam in the corner. Gets it back out. No, McCaffrey got a hand on it. And to his better judgment, decides not to go into the second row. There's Leitner. Now he figured, now he, he figured twice, and it turned out to be wrong both times on Johanning. One, he thought he could steal the ball from him, and it backfired. Two, said, I'll take this guy. He's not fresh. Goes inside, and Johanning gets the ball perfectly blocked. Johanning could have faced Leitner a few more times. He originally had signed with Clemson. And then a series of knee injuries. He ended up in Kansas after three operations, in fact. Richie bounce passing it inside to Zoe Jameson. Short on the layup. Right off of Grant Hill's hands. And let's get another report from James Brown. All right, Jim. Mike Krzyzewski has his checklist of notes as well. The big note in the last timeout, he says, fellas, let's not forget the history of the Jayhawks. No lead is big enough against this team, so don't even worry about watching the scoreboard. Keep the pressure up. Let's go back to Jim. Terry Brown with a three. Double, ball. double screen. Here they've got the numbers for the first time tonight on the break. Grant Hill blocked again by Joe Hanning, but they call him on the foul. Does Kansas get back on D? One of the real good things about this club. They do all the little things right. Look at how those guys hustling back down court. Joe Hanning almost coming up with a sensational block. Now, Duke crossed half court with the numbers. Three on two. They ended up not being able to convert because of good hustle. James talked about no lead too large against Kansas. As you see Brian Davis in for Duke. Kansas was down nine in the first half against Carolina and down 12 at the half against Arkansas. Came back to win both. 
Grant Hill mentioned he had attended Final Fours. He was in Lexington and Dallas. He was, in fact, in Kansas City as a spectator, high schooler with his father. Kansas City when the Jayhawks won the title in 88. Well, I'm sure Roy Williams wished that his recruiting efforts on Grand Hill would have been better if they had Grand Hill be playing for North Carolina, which was really his favorite school as a kid growing up. And Roy Williams at that time was recruiting him when he was just a, a sophomore in high school. Brian Davis too close to Richie, and Davis called on the hack his second. Team foul number six. Still not in the one and one. And Roy Williams was uh, was checking out Grant Hill as early as his sophomore year. That was when, of course, Williams was at Carolina as an assistant to Dean Smith. Good and try. off the hands of Jameson. Billy, you pointed it out earlier, having problems on the inbounding. Oh, oh, what are they calling here? Mickey Crowley has overruled it. Mickey Crowley says it's going back to Kansas. I don't understand that call. Maybe he said there was interference on the sideline with the... Let's see this one. Goes up. There's no question who touches the ball last. I didn't understand it. Didn't see any interference either. 115 before the half. Duke by seven. But Jordan has been able to shake Hurley. Hurley hasn't been able to shake Jordan, so there's been a Mexican standoff for those two. Good back screen. Joe Hanning way over to Adonis. Side. Scott missing, but the follow by Joe Hanning. Hey, some plummeting minutes from yep. this guy. Unexpected. This bench is amazing. Saturday it was Scott. It's been Tunstall in the tournament a number of times. Richie sometimes during the course of the year. Today, Joe Hanning. Currently having stopped his dribble. Leitner almost lost it. See, Joe Hanning doesn't have to worry about fouling. Leitner with the Sorry. left hand. No! They rule it away. Offensive foul called on Lakner. That's, that's his second. Yep. He's going to have to come out right now. Duke, will, of course, will hold the ball the next time they get it. And what happened to Christian Lakner is that he had to start too far away from the basket. See, he dribbled up for about 25 feet there, which gave Jamison an opportunity to get over and Scott to get over and be in the way. And in that particular case, it was Scott that drew the charge. Final 25 seconds of the first half. Duke is 28 and 0 this year when leading at halftime. Oh, there's a walk. Scott got by with that one. Duke will be leading at the half. It's a question of by how much. Hold on a minute. They say he stepped on the line. He was not forced out. Scott stepped on the line. Duke will have a chance with 11.8 seconds. Kubek in, Davis out, Mike Krzyzewski realizing he wants offensive players in now. Hill comes in, Palmer out. So basically he's going to play, he's going to play this remaining uh, 11 seconds with basically a guard lineup on the floor. T obviously is to get the ball in. Roy Williams counters right away and said, I want better defensive matchups. Takes Joe Hanning out, counters with a much quicker player on the inside. Kirk Wagner. Tunstall had checked in a moment ago as well. Hurley may try to take this by himself. Penetration. He has a beat on it. Back out to Thomas Hill. Looking for the three. Yes. Thomas Hill drills the three to end the first half with the score. Duke 42. Kansas 34. CBS Sports coverage of the men's NCAA basketball championship game will continue after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports coverage of the 1991 NCAA basketball championship game is sponsored by Mazda Cars and Trucks. Mazda, it just feels right. The people of UPS now offering next day air delivery on Saturday. And by Mountain Dew, as the game heats up, keep it cool with Dew, Mountain Dew, and regular and diet. CBS Sports presents The Prudential at the Half. Sponsored by the companies of The Prudential. Come to The Prudential and build your future on The Rock. And our score at the half, the Kansas Jayhawks trail the Duke Blue Devils 42 to 34. The big men, Christian Leitner and Mark Randall, each have a dozen points each. And hi again, everybody. I'm Pat O'Brien along with uh, Mike Francesa and the championship trophy and 
If Duke continues this, they may be on their way, Mike. 59% shooting. They shot the ball very well in a big sequence right before the half. Uh, Kansas had a chance to go in, maybe close the gap a little more. It was five at the time. They turned the ball over. Duke comes down, hits a huge three to go up eight. That's a very big margin right now. But remember this about Kansas. Very physically, mentally tough team, resilient. They came back from 12 back against Arkansas. They're a tough team to put away. And they're capable of doing that Absolutely. as well. You're right. Let us, uh, for a moment, uh, digress a minute and take you back in time and go back to 1966. Let us refresh your memories. Lyndon Johnson was in the White House. The Beatles had just released the Revolver. Turtles were not mutant or ninja. We were at war in Vietnam and also at home. Black and white relations were sometimes very tense. And in college basketball, for the first time, as Curry Kirkpatrick reports, five young black men were getting set to tip it off in the NCAA championship. 1966 was both an end and a beginning. Texas Western, starting five black players, defeated proud all-white Kentucky for the NCAA title. The coach of the school, now known as UTEP, or Texas at El Paso, was and is Don Haskins. Around the country, I would hear uh, the word quota, you know, there, there was a quota at some schools, and, and uh, I'd never heard the word quota here. Kentucky coach Adolph Rupp, the Baron of the Bluegrass, was a man of colonial roots and an attitude to match, a symbol of a time not yet gone when bigotry and prejudice still impeded simple civil rights. Those days, everybody was, you know, you had five black athletes, everybody was so undisciplined. No way you can get, you can't, can't have five stars together and blend in as a team. Rupp's famous runts were the old coach's most treasured team, but the raffish renegade band from the Badlands dominated the game with quickness and defense. They won 72-65. When I'm going for a rebound or for a dunk shot or whatever I'm doing on the court, I don't, I don't have time to look and see, find out what color the guy is. Uh, you know, I just go for the ball and if he's black or if he's white or if he's green, it really doesn't matter. For the Ides of March 66, it was only a game. But in time, it came to mean something much more. I was really, I would say, elated and a lot to black people as a whole. I think uh, not only to black people, but a lot of times people don't realize that it brought about integration a lot easier and smoother throughout the country, not only for blacks, but for white as well. Probably was the most singular instrumental thing that uh, led to uh, black athletes being recru recruited to predominantly white schools uh, on athletic scholarships. And it's a good thing for uh, big universities uh, to, to be integrated, uh, to stand for something, to uh, promote the American dream. This is the same small gym where the Texas Western Miners prepared to win the national championship in 1966. 25 years later, a worshipful El Paso celebrates that occasion. It's history, good history. It's heartwarming to come back to El Paso. I like El Paso, and that even more makes special to me. Recognizing their cherished role in history, the entire city seemed to line up for hours for autographs, including the same cheerleader who led the cheers so long ago. And I can see him now, and I just feel like I'm 19 when I'm looking at him. You know, I forget. But of course, nobody in El Paso or anywhere else who cares about sport will fail to remember the brash young miners who changed the game forever. A quarter of a century later, if only the world could be as carefree and together a place as a basketball court. The court made open and free by Texas Western in 1966. Curry Kirkpatrick, CBS Sports. And it is uh, great to see more and more black coaches, champions like uh, John Thompson and Cheney, Randy Ayers, Clem Haskins, Nolan Richardson, and hopefully progress will continue on that note. We'll be back from Indianapolis after this. Stay with us. Indianapolis has been just simply a great host for this championship and final four, a great week of activities here. And we thank all the great people of this uh, city and state really for making our trip here uh, really a great one. Let us turn now to the financial page. <laughs> and bring you up to date on some baseball news. Dwight Gooden today became the second highest paid baseball player when he agreed to a three-year contract extension, Mike, worth a guaranteed $15.45 million. Now, with a bonus clause for pitching 500 innings over the next three years, he would become the highest paid player over Boston's uh, Roger Clemens. 
Let's uh, send it out now to the catacombs of the building, or wherever they are, and uh, check in on our reporters. Let's begin with Leslie Besser, who's with Kansas. Leslie. Hi, Pat. The Kansas Jayhawks went into the locker room a little bewildered, but not discouraged. Assistant coach Jerry Jerry Green said that offensively they want more ball movement. They're standing around too much. Defensively, he said what they'd like to do is keep Christian Leitner from receiving the entry pass. They also would like to put more pressure on the ball at the perimeter. You know, this is a group Roy Williams says is his most competitive bunch, and we all saw they came back from a 12-point deficit at halftime against, Car against Arkansas. Let's go over to James Brown. All right, Leslie, well, the first note is that this locker room demeanor is 180 degrees different from last year when Mike Krzyzewski was kicking over trash cans, had blown his top. It's a quiet locker room. He's pleased about a couple of things. One, the reserves have given him an awful lot of support. Not that they've scored tremendously so, but they've maintained the lead, and that's kept the veterans with some fresh legs. Fresh legs is a major concern for Christian Leitner. He's been substituted for several times. Now, the one big concern as far as Kansas is concerned, they're killing them on the offensive glass. A defensive wrinkle will be not not to play the big guys of Kansas when they're out high, but pick them up when they start to make their moves to the basket. That's it from the Duke locker room. Let's go back upstairs to Pat O'Brien. All right, James, thank you. Leslie, thank you, too. And does Kansas have the heart? We know they have the patience. Do they have the heart and the talent to come back in this, this game? This team has shown a tremendous amount of heart. They have to pick up a little better defensive intensity, stop Leitner from catching the ball, and get Alonzo Jamison in the game inside. All right, the Duke Blue Devils are 20 minutes away from their first championship, but they have to get through another half. They lead the Jayhawks 42 to 34. And as we watch them right before they go on the court, let's send you to a commercial and a station break. And on the other side of that, it's Jim Nance and Billy Packer. Enjoy the second half, everybody. The Prudential at the half was sponsored by the Prudential. Come to the companies of the Prudential and build your future on the rock. An NCAA basketball championship game is sponsored by the new generation of Oldsmobile, official car of the NCAA championships. AT&T, the right choice. And by Mass Mutual. At Mass Mutual, we help you keep your promises. Well, here are your halftime numbers. Three-point shooting has been excellent for both teams, but Duke especially with five out of seven. In field goal percentage numbers, Duke way above average what Kansas has been holding its opponents in the tournament. By almost 18%. Leitner's made uh, already 10 out of 10 free throws. Uh, the rest of the team is Grant Hill, one out of three from the line for Grant Hill. And you talked about that even matchup, Randall and Leitner with 12 points each. Including Randall's first three of his career. It's an eight-point lead for Duke after eight empty trips to the Final Four. Maybe eight is enough, and tonight's the magic night. What about the second half here, Billy? Jim, one of the things that's uh, very obvious to me that Duke does not have anywhere near the quickness that they had against UNLV, and that could be a telltale sign here in the second half. The other thing, Hurley has played the full 20 minutes, so he has not been out of either game at any point so far in the Final Four. All right, Kansas starting with the second half. Alonzo Jameson, oh, missing again. He had 0 for 4, yep. and he had perfect position. The guy averaging 13 points, 8 rebounds in the tournament. Scoreless at this point, and only one board. And now there's a mismatch here. Hurley is on Jameson. That means that somebody has got to be open. Hurley takes advantage. Blows right by the baseline, and an errant pass picked off by Randall. Hurley tried to attack too quickly. Maddox left open as Leitner stumbled, gets the soft roll. Very unusual to see these two teams open up with the intensity they had the first half, the second half getting caught in mismatches. Bobby Hurley averaging five assists to one turnover in this tournament, Billy. And remember the Arkansas game. This is where Kansas just took over, and Duke two times down the floor make two very bad plays in a row. Kubek missing that one. Hill coming over to help out, but he bumped into the body of Maddox, so foul on Thomas Hill, his second. Perimeter passing for the Jayhawks. Down six. Working it around for a three-pointer. 
Leitner takes the rebound. Hurley looks ahead, sees his men, hill to hill. Turn around, spin move, no good. Jamison, there's a rebound for Zoe. That's a tough hoop down there. Neither team able to capitalize on those up close. Maddox, back out, stolen. Grant Hill has the steal. Splits the defenders, makes the lay-in. He did jam in an outstanding play going to the hoop, particularly with Jamison, an outstanding defender right with him, but not that great explosive quickness that we saw two days ago. Still had a great highlight in the early minutes of this game. On the lob pass, seven for Grant Hill. Thomas Hill deflects it out of bounds. Did you like the way Grant Hill used the body after the steal? As he goes in for the layup, Billy? See, he anticipated the pass was not a good idea going that far across court and then just shielded, as you say, the defender to stop the block. That screen, there it is, nice play. <laughs> we had the perfect angle on it, and Maddox saw it also. That right to Randall. Back screen on Christian Leitner. Thomas Hill recognized it, couldn't get over there in time. 14 for Randall. With that bad back, it's amazing how Maddox can get out and guard a man away from the basket so well. Leitner kind of forced that one. And Brown knocked it out of bounds. We'll see what I talk about a back screen. See Brown coming up. He gets Leitner. No place for Leitner to go. Too late. Hill doesn't get over in time. Hill traveled. And Mike Krzyzewski and Roy Williams are getting to be like two jockeys right now on horses that are kind of collapsing coming down the stretch. I mean, neither one of these teams playing up to par. Both of the guys up the, off the bench with the whip, trying to get them back into focus here as they were in the first half. Brian Davis in for Kubek. Alonzo Jamison, I know he wants to get on the board. He's got Hill posted up now. Brown driving, off balance shot, oh, in and out. Spun out. Grant Hill on the baseline. Hurley swings it over, sets up Hill, back over to Davis, a better open shot. Back of the rim and Maddox has it. Duke not converting here in the second half. Giving Kansas a chance to get back in it. Grant Hill tried for the other steal, but called for the foul. With Grant Hill, that's his first. And uh, Coach Krzyzewski dials M for McCaffrey, who had a pretty good first half. McCaffrey came in with seven points off the bench in the first half. You see Jamison bending over, grabbing those shorts. So maybe he's so showing a little signs of wear here. He wants to drive. Yep. Dishes instead. Left-handed layup by Randall. Had to do it, too. Used his body as well. Four-point game, Billy. Mike Krzyzewski's got to be getting a little concerned now because his team not executing on the half court. McCaffrey. One dribble, and he hits it. That's a two. McCaffrey getting that nice bounce off of there. He had the ankle injury earlier on this year. Took away an awful lot of his game, and they're going to Leitner down low. And they called it on Leitner as Randall really had him post it up. That's his third, Jim. Serious problems for Duke inside. They may have to start showing some zone, and in this case, they go to Palmer. Palmer's already taken the warm-ups off to check in for Leitner. Great position by, Rand by Randall. That's the old deal. Fatigue makes cowards of us all. Leitner a little tired, not fighting for position as well as he normally would. Just one of those fatigue fouls. Mentioned earlier now as Randall will attempt two. Kansas's all-time shooter percentage-wise from the floor. He played high school basketball for a pretty accurate shooter. Matt Calvin was... Great shooter. Yep. One of those NBA player. One of those 90% free throw shooters. Randall missing. Missing them both. Now Grant Hill is coming up big time after time on the boards. Defense! 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 
McCaffrey. No place to go in there. Got it back out to Hill. Oh, nice fake. Driving, soft touch, yes. Beautiful fake. With the ball, with the shoulders. Nine for Grant Hill. Randall steps in, gives it to Maddox. Maddox wanted to go back to Randall inside. Boy, he's a good passer. Do you think back in the semifinals when Duke beat Kansas and Danny Manning, Manning got in that serious foul trouble, played very little in the first half. Duke able to pull that game out with Johnny Dawkins, worked their way to the final against Louisville. That was the 86 one, and then Kansas came back and won in 88. Two bodies down. Jordan takes the three. Good no calls by the official. No advantage gained by defense or offense. McCaffrey says, why not? Wow! How about his game tonight, Billy? McCaffrey with 12, his season average. We talked about strangers off that bench. You know, Scott tonight really does nothing. You know, Johanny comes off. We hadn't seen him before. It gives him great quality minutes. And now for Duke, McCaffrey putting on a show offensively. There's a lob. Maddox wasn't ready for it. A turnover and a timeout. Thomas Hill will be checking in. Television timeout. Duke with an eight-point lead. Oldsmobile, official car for NCAA championships, calls this timeout to tell you about the other game in town. The Oldsmobile drive to the Final Four Celephon. At your Olds dealer, you can get a great deal on every new 1991 Oldsmobile. In addition to the terrific values, you'll also have a shot at winning hundreds of prizes like a new Cutlass Supreme or a large screen TV. Hey, with deals like this, you can't miss. It has never been done. Nick Faldo tries to win three in a row. A tradition unlike any other, the Masters on CBS Sports. on top by eight and the timeout on the Duke bench this time was one more of a psychological boost by Mike Krzyzewski trying to get his guys not to think about their fatigue he's trying to push them trying to encourage them he realizes his guys are weak much like a fighter and he's just trying to appeal to their emotions he says fellas 14 minutes to a championship now let's check in with Leslie Visser JB Kansas wants to move the transition offense more quickly up the floor. They also want to set some high screens for Jordan. Defensively, it's just put a body on McCaffrey. Over to Jim. Wow, to Davis. Wow, Hurley to Davis, who skies for the dunk. Jim, the second time Duke has done a great job attacking the 1 3 1 half court zone press. Duke has its largest lead. Brown right back. No good. Davis with the play at the other end. 10-point Duke lead. Jim, I'm very surprised that Christian Leitner is back in the game. He's got three fouls. I, I think Mike Krzyzewski should keep him on the bench, let him rest as long as he's got a working margin. I think it's very dangerous this early in the game to bring him back. You've got your best free throw shooter. How about that move? Blocking foul on Randall, and that's his third. Davis with the dunk on the previous play. Well, we saw Davis make the dunk. We saw Grand Hill before. These are two excellent slashers to the basket. And Thomas Hill can do likewise. It's a very unusual team. They really don't have a center. Bobby Hurley and Christian Leitner and then a bunch of swingmen. It's like Tark said, he felt like he was going against a guard and four forwards. Well. Tark got himself in a situation where he kept worrying about how do I match up with Duke instead of making Duke match up with him. I think when you're the favored team, you force the other man to, to figure out how he's going to guard Larry Johnson. The table got turned, and then Tark couldn't match him. As I mentioned, that's three on Randall, but only the first team foul on Kansas in the first seven minutes now of the second half. Davis missing the first one. Yeah, I think Duke has come out of that timeout, as James Brown reported, very spirited. Here's one of their real leaders, too, a young man who worked last summer on Capitol Hill for Senator Terry Sanford. Will work on Wall Street this summer. Missing them both, however. Well, Scott's got Leitner down in low. Kansas ought to try to get him the ball. Woodbury spinning around. Oh, no. Tipped in by Scott. 
Took and one at goaltending. A great call by the official. No call? No, sir. That ball was outside the cylinder. Scott right up there with it with excellent timing. Roy Williams getting out of that 1-3-1. Uh, one, one. Tunstall jumped right out on Hurley and bumped him with the body. Here's your tip in, Billy. Watch the angle. Ball comes back outside the cylinder. Scott goes up. Good job. Excellent timing. Oh! Leitner threw it to what the wrong a man, and Woodbury couldn't believe it, and it knocked it right off his own knee. What a break. That same play, similar play happened to Jordan this year earlier in a Kansas game where he saw Matt Randall coming into the game to, as a substitute, thought he was a player and passed him the ball when he was out of bounds. Hurley finds Davis cutting to the hole. One of the few times Hurley's been able to beat Jordan with a dribble. Boy, Kansas needs to look inside to Randall. He's got Leitner. They've got to get the fourth file on Leitner. Here it is. Here they are. Pretty good job by Leitner to lay off him. Yep, Davis came over for a moment to help. I'm really surprised that Mike Krzyzewski with this lead is leaving Leitner in a game. Good backdoor cut. Randall missed the dunk. Blocking foul called on Duke and Davis. He fooled uh, Leitner on that one, didn't he, Billy? Well, well, Leitner is really going to have his hands full. Now watch. Randall comes to the ball, makes the good cut, then uses that right arm as kind of a... Good swim move on by Leitner. Leitner not there in time, and pretty good job by Davis to go over there and at least try to draw the charge. And that would have been a big call if he could have because Randall has his own foul problems. Randall will shoot two. Again, he played for Coach Krzyzewski on the world team last summer, was a starter with Billy Owens, Alonzo Warning, Kenny Anderson, and Chris Smith, and Leitner backed them up. Back so close to Coach K that after the victory over North Carolina, Randall set in the stands of the first half of the Duke UNLV game with Mickey Krzyzewski. Well, Mark recruited as a high school All-American by Larry Brown and had that very disappointing start, had some medical problems. Actually missed two games this year with medical problems. That's a walk. Walking on McCaffrey. Duke turns it over. Duke with an eight-point lead, 12 minutes to go. You're not going to get many uncontested drives unless you've got some power. And Mike Krzyzewski saying there's a push there. But Kansas is going to put the body on you, whether they're setting a the screen or playing defense. Now, there, there goes Leitner out of the game. Mike Krzyzewski was kind of lucky there. He has an eight-point lead. Leitner goes out, doesn't pick up that fourth foul. Palmer's in for him. Palmer d it up now against Randall, giving him some, some room. Jordan finds Randall. Tunstall. Yes. Nice help. Nice help by Davis. Tunstall was on the line. Duke will have the basketball when we come back. 11.41 left in the championship game. Live from Andrews Air Force Base, America's biggest stars welcome home America's returning heroes on the All-Star Salute to Our Troops Wednesday. Back at the Hoosier Dome, an official's timeout. Duke leading by eight with 11.41 remaining. Jim Nance along with Billy Packer. And Billy, your thoughts now as we approach the final half of the second half. Not surprising to see Kansas come out in some full court pressure. Key thing here is Christian Leitner and Randall. Both in the games in foul trouble. Randall hasn't had much of a break as far as the physical standpoint to get off the floor. Leitner has had some subs. Oh. Oh. Davis somehow oh. got it over to Leitner who laid it in. Davis has been coming up big in both games here in the final four. You notice how Leitner's laying off Randall now on the outside. Even though Randall did hit that 1-3. He's letting them handle the ball on the pass. Jamison underneath. Oh, fake good. block by Grant Hill. You know, it, is Grant Hill a lot better defender than we've given him credit for? I mean, he's been assigned to tough people and carries it out. Had a rough regional. Just seemed to be all thumbs in the regional, but he is really playing well in the final four. Good, solid screen. Oh, nice Turn around in and out. 
Hill tried to tip it in. That's Duke's first miss after six straight from the floor. Tunstall, too strong on the lay-in. Look at little it. McCaffrey travel. What happens when you rebound against Kansas? You have got to do one of two things. Either get the ball out immediately or protect it, because they attack you when you get a rebound. That time, and that's the second time tonight, McCaffrey's gotten a good rebound, only to have it taken away from him. Roy Williams with a smile over there. You know, you know, Roy Williams and Mike Krzyzewski, both entry-level coaches at grad assistants, a job that the college presidents say that they've got to do away with now. And all college presidents would love to have these guys coach him. There's a steal and a head to McCaffrey. Big play for Duke. Getting a little work in margin. I think you're going to have to see Brown back in the game as we are right now so that he can get that three going. He's got to get the three started. Some kind of offensive power. Duke goes zone. And almost another steal. Into the hands of Scott. Still gets the rebound. They've got a chance for a break. Duke has its largest lead, a 12-point lead. Hurley will slow it down. Protected that ball nicely. They're trying to get Leitner free in the low post. Turns around and surveys. Randall knocked it loose. Hurley back out. Here's McCaffrey again. Three-pointer. No. Good, that good block out by Jameson. Finds Brown on the wing. Jameson bypasses the shot. Tunstall fakes. Back to Jameson. See, Duke's packed that zone way in. Kansas not getting decent spacing yet. Scott doesn't oh, go too strong. Grant Hill with another rebound. Leitner tired now. Mike Krzyzewski wanting his team to take a little rest with the ball. Seven rebounds for Grant Hill. <laughs> Look at Leitner walking up the court. Got to watch five seconds here. Leitner better not try to dribble that far out. Oh, he just throws, throws it away. Us. Yeah, not a good idea. Guys get tired, they get mentally tired. Let's get a report from Leslie. Jim, Roy Williams wants three things defensively. He wants his team to have more court awareness. He wants them to play defense for the entire possession. And he also wants them to keep the man in front of them, not get beat on the drive. Jim? Leitner still shuttling in and out. He sits. Kubek's in, along with Palmer, and Grant Hill rest also. Well, you see, Mike Krzyzewski's got a great feel for his players' fatigue right now. And he knows that that pass by Leitner was just a matter of mental fatigue. He just threw the ball away. Gets him out of there and lets him sit. Hill just shadowing Brown so he can't get that three off. Brown not having the half he did in the first half. Jamison now takes the three. On the floor, Kubek has it, swings it down court, Hurley will go to the line for two. Good hustle by Scott to get back there. Nice clean play. Let's bring in James Brown. All right, Jim, during the last timeout, Coach Mike Krzyzewski calmly looked his guys in the eyes on the bench with the assurance of a family doctor and said, fellas, this is the point during the game where Kansas traditionally has made its run coming back from major deficits. These are the most crucial four minutes coming up. Let's not give up anything easy, get easy layups, and we can go for the jugular. Back to Jim. And here comes a Carolina-type move. This is, a, of course, a Carolina Roy Williams training place called the blue team they don't have a name for it at Kansas but a wholesale change Billy well I think what you're seeing from Roy Williams here an opportunity for him to get his five key players over there and he's going to give them a tongue lashing tell them guys we are now in a situation where we're going to have to go to war for the next couple of minutes don't be surprised to see them back in shortly and now he's got basically some fresh troops out there to go after Duke Early. this was primarily to get all five fellas on that sidelines to give him that final talk here it is Talking to one of the players, Richard Scott, who committed the foul to put Hurley on the line. Bring in Leslie Visser quickly. Jim, that tongue lashing was emotional by Roy Williams. He told his starters, don't worry about the score. This is just a basketball game. Now get it under control. Jim? It's slipping. That's down 14. Wagner's in. You talk about Mike Krzyzewski being a disciple of Bob Knight. Well, look at the zone. He's playing the 2-3. He is his own man, and this is excellent strategy on his part. 
Too quick a pass for Wagner, and Duke has the ball back eight minutes away from the championship with a 14-point lead. I would say that Roy Williams will be putting those guys back in on the next possession. Here comes the trap. Nice job by Hurley to beat it with the dribble. This young man has not been out of a game yet in the final four, and he's got the stamina to hang in there. Bob the Palmer now handling yeah, it. You don't want him handling it. Maddox on him. They and don't he want him handling yep. it. Television timeout with 7.47 to go. Duke has its largest lead. If your feathers have been ruffled by downdrafts in the market, get on board something big, safe, and secure. Get met. It pays. There's your game summary. Duke with a 12-point edge on points off turnovers. At the bottom, you see Hurley, 10 points, 9 assists. And D'ing super, up right now on Jordan. And super defense. Richie, a freshman, back out to Jordan. Back to the man to get out of the zone. I'm surprised Kansas has not tried to get the ball in on Leitner. Jordan in the corner. 20 seconds on the shot clock. His team down 14. Notice, see, Leitner is not going to go out and guard a big man outside. Richie with a three, too strong. Wagner with the rebound. A shot, and he makes it. Boy, that was a tough shot. Kirk Wagner, a high school teammate of Stacy Ogman in Pasadena, California. Jimmy, coming in off the bench with two. He's fading away, shooting against his body, and didn't use the board and still made it. Billy McCaffrey driving past Woodbury. Pump fake, he'll go to the line. Let's see who they call this one on. Hold on a minute here. That could be on Maddox. I, th I think it's going to be on Woodbury. It is on Woodbury. Yep. His third. Let's get a report from Leslie now. Jim, in the last timeout, Roy Williams appealed to his team both logically and emotionally. He told him, this isn't how we played all year. We've got seven and a half minutes left in the national championship to get it back. And Billy, you're right. They do want to go at Leitner to pick up the next foul. Jim? But still unable to get past that third foul that Leitner has. That goal by Wagner, by the way, stopped the four-minute dry spell by the Jayhawks. And now McCaffrey with two attempts. Jim, Mike Swanson, our outstanding stat man, pointed out something that's, that looks like it's the theory Mike Krzyzewski's using. He's taken Leitner out a minute and ten seconds before he thinks the next TV timeout's coming, so he can use that minute plus the TV minute to really get like a long blow for Leitner every time. They go back to the 2-3 zone. Mike must have a computer in his head over there. Or some real good assistant coaches. <laughs> Jamison power move. Second time, Kansas has done a good job splitting right down inside against the zone. That's the first two points of the game for Jamison, averaging 11. But what the zone is also doing is taking some time off the clock as Kansas needs to pass the ball. McCaffrey scored on the free throws last time. He has 16. Looking for help now. Finds Hurley. So he'll take the three. Leitner didn't push off. Bangs into Randall and lays it in off the glass. You know what made that play? Leitner keeping the ball up above his head. Made it imp gave him an opportunity to get his balance back. Billy, we saw him going crazy at Cameron. Indoor arena where Duke, of course, plays its home games. The giant screen in place. Brown three-pointer. He hits it. Mistake Hurley. You see what happened? He went inside to help out, and Brown does what he does so well. Just stayed out beyond that three-point line and buried it. Brown with 13. 5.40 left in the game. Just a little mental lapse by Bobby Hurley. Jump pass over to Thomas Hill. In the corner, McCaffrey drives the got baseline. It. Got pushed from behind. No call. Woodbury now into the front court. Over to Brown. This is the man they want to shoot. Not this time. Woodbury, good follow. Mike's got to be thinking time. Got it down to nine. Timeout called by Duke. Duke calls the time with a nine-point lead. Well, we all know Duke has been so close in, in recent years. In fact, for the last five, they've lost to the eventual champion only in 89 when they lost to Seton Hall. Did they not have that distinction? 
Bobby Hurley trying to get Jamison over his back. Kansas has scored five unanswered to get it down to single digits. Well, they have a mismatch down inside. Davis has Jordan, and he wants the ball down low. But he went to the other side. Oh, what a pickup on Di Wow! Jamison all over Hurley, and it's Kansas basketball. Boy, you saw that defense turn up a notch there. Wouldn't even let anybody come to the ball. Now, what Kansas is doing is they're starting to use a lot of hand checking, a lot of body. They're going to force the referees to make the calls. Good strategy by Roy Williams. Woodbury on the box, turn around, missed it. It's a frozen rope picked up by Lakeman. Watch will this. Walk it up. Jim, watch the defense now. There's going to be a lot of pushing, a lot of holding. They're going to try to go ahead and hand check and make every pass tough. McCaffrey, you watch that. Look, look at that. Now they're going to. The referees will have a tough decision to make. They don't want to turn this game around with a foul shooting contest. And that's why I think it's good strategy to use. Over to Leitner, 20 on the shot. See clock. the hand check? Leitner thought about challenging. Randall brings it out to Hill. Woodbury is by far the weakest one-on-one -on -one defender of Kansas team. Hill missed on the dribble drive. Now Jordan goes to the corner. And Brown's waiting for the three. Davis gets back out on him. Now Randall over to Jamison, driving on Hill. Oh, no foul. Oh, great play by Leitner. And Leitner's got Jamison down. There's somebody's going to be open here. Duke in no hurry, Billy. Yep. But if it's there, you've got to take it. Still a nine-point lead, approaching 3.30 remaining. And a blocking call against Jamison, his third. Five on Kansas, so Duke's still two away from shooting free throws. Well, if you're scouting right now the Kansas team and you look out on the floor, the man that I think should have the ball in his hands the most is whoever Woodbury's guard. Well, eliminate that strategy because Roy Williams sees that too. He takes yeah. Woodbury out. Takes Jamison and out Jamison as well. Too. Maddox in, and Tunstall in. Correct. And the reason I said that is because McCaffrey was beaten Woodbury. Donis Jordan will put his body on you if you don't watch it. I mean, Bobby Hurley's going to be exhausted after this one. They watch the body. Team. Watch the body. Double team McCaffrey and a hold against. Who's that going against, that, Billy? It's going it's against, against McCaffrey. McCaffrey. Yeah, see, they're just putting so much body on him right now. And you have got it. Watch this. Hands all over. Look at all the body. And there's McCaffrey. He gets it stripped, and then he has to grab Brown. to be a battle of wills the rest of the way now. You know, on this side of the court, when McCaffrey was doubled up, I saw Bobby Hurley trying to call time, but it was not in time. Uh, it was good that he didn't. Duke only has two timeouts left. You wouldn't want to find your position in using them. Tunstall. Big shot. Yeah, to you. Hill with the rebound. Hunstel missing the three. A dry spell right now for both teams. I think that Duke ought to look to score some instead of just trying to hold the ball. Grant Hill driving past Maddox. Out of control with the body, but they're going to call it a block against Terry Brown. A great move by Hill, too. He realizes Maddox can't guard him out on the outside. It's, it's so easy to guard a team, and a lot of times you see this in practice. Jim, a coach says, I want us to just hold the ball, don't go to score. It's difficult to hold the ball for 45 seconds when the team's coming out and bodying you. And if you can, sometimes you can break and get a real easy one. Don't be surprised to see Duke not try to get one easy. Shooting two. Woodbury right back in. And Hill at the line to shoot two. Only one of three from the line tonight. For the freshman from Reston, Virginia. And considering the way Duke is going to try to use the clock, if you're Roy Williams, you got to be thinking about getting Brown untracked with some solid screens for a three. Jamison in for Maddox. Good move again by Roy Williams and the fact that he saw right away that they were going to break Maddox down with the drive. Jamison, a much better defender on the perimeter. Yes. Rebound comes to Brown. Ten-point lead for Duke. Kansas needs some points in a hurry. See, right now, Leitner's playing a one-man zone in the middle. 
Randall's got to take advantage of that. Davis right on the back of Jamison. His fourth, and that's 16 fouls against Duke. And Kansas will inbound. Pretty, and pretty in the next foul, of course, Kansas goes to the line. We talk about how poor they are in the free throw line. But of course, in their big win against Arkansas, they had hit 16 of 17 over the last five minutes. So this team finds some ways to do positive things. But they got a hole right now that they've dug for themselves. Woodbury at the last minute found Randall couldn't control it, and Hurley takes it for Duke. 2.30 left in the game and a 10-point lead. Blue Devils looking for their first championship. There's Hurley. I said they'll get an easy one. Oh, he bypassed it, Billy. He knew it would yep. get rejected. Back out to Leitner. Leitner now looking for an opening. He'll challenge Randall. Too strong. Not a good shot. And a rebound by Brown. Kansas quickly. Jordan driving. Stops in the corner. Bounces it out. Brown three-pointer. Oh, no. shot. You know what? He makes that shot better fading away than he does when he's standing still. Well, it's a seven-point lead. Duke with 2.07 remaining in Indianapolis. Jim Nance along with Billy Packer. You know, Billy, when these two met in the Final Four in 1988, Kansas won 66-59. It's the same score at this point with Duke in front this time. Duke with the ball and a seven-point advantage. Woodbury jumps out on Hurley. Must think. watch out for the 10 count. Grant Hill gets it into the front court. Into the corner, Leitner. Great ball handler for a big man. But he didn't make a good decision the last time, Jim, when he tried to put that shot up. The clock now becomes another one of their teammates. Seven-point the lead in a hole by Jamison, very clearly. And that's four on Jamison. Let's bring in Leslie. Jim, quickly, Roy Williams was very calm during the last time out. He told his teammates to be aware, his team to be aware of the clock, but not to hurry. He also told them, we have plenty of time, don't panic. That's optimism. Well, they really do have enough time here, Billy, with 143 to go. Two timeouts left. Of course, he's got a great three-point shooter in Brown who showed that on that fadeaway that he can make them from almost any distance. And now it looks like it's going to be somewhat of a free-throw shooting contest. Hill will shoot the one and one. Cold at the line tonight is Hill. In the corner, Jordan. Tunstall. They work it around to Brown. With a man all over, takes the three. Leitner with the rebound. Randall was on his back. And that's four on Randall. Eighth team foul on Kansas. Leitner, such an excellent shooter, will go to the line for a one and one. And Jim, I, I pointed this out before, and you can see Scott, who had the uh, game that was so outstanding against North Carolina, starting to bury those hands down a little bit. But, and it is unusual, and maybe it just runs, as Roy Williams says, in the water. But Kansas, on the year, of course, only shot 62%, but they had great defense against the foul shot. They, their opponents only how, shot 65%. Now, how, how do, is that possible? Yeah, how do you D up against the free throw? Come on. One and one, look at Leitner. Well, of all the guys, of course, as we said, the record setter in the NCAA tournament, both attempts and made now. And, you know, a very unfortunate thing, and I think it's something the NCAA ought to change. Christian Leitner had a hard time with his drug test the other day because he was just so dried out, dehydrated from the game. I think they ought to test the players before games and give those kids an opportunity to get immediate rest. Missed out on the team celebration. The team bus ride back. Here's Jameson. He's got a rim. man free. They've got Grant Hill, but Leitner was jammed by Jamison. Hurley is bumped by Tunstall. Well, you're getting a sense, Jim. And I'll tell you another place getting a sense of it. Billy, look at him at Cameron. They're going wild in Cameron Indoor Stadium. Folks, a minute and seven seconds away from planning on having a championship banner inside. Well, uh, you take your hats off to both of these schools because their student bodies probably put on as good a show in their home arenas as any place in the country. And one of the things you also ought to tap your ha tip your hat off to the Duke administration is they let those students sit right down on the court so they can be a real part of the game. McCaffrey, McCaffrey with a big game, Hurley with a big game in the backcourt. He hits them both. 
Driving is Jordan. Timeout! Timeout! Off the glass, called the timeout before the shot went through. Timeout by Kansas. 101, 61 seconds away for the title for Duke. One remaining in the contest, Duke up by nine, and Mike Krzyzewski during that timeout, no information overload with X's and O's. He looked at the big fella, Leighton, and says, fella, if you can't give it to me physically, give it to me mentally. Let's go back to Jim. They foul Grant Hill on the jump pass. Foul goes against Woodbury. Billy, you were making a point about the Kansas bench. Well, what's interesting, Jim, and not the players. <laughs> not the players. It really has been, at least up to this point, the unlucky place to be because all the teams who have been on that bench in the semifinals lost. And we find Kansas in a position now sitting on that bench in a situation where they're in uh, some serious trouble with just 57 seconds to go and only one timeout left to be able to stop a clock. That's the 10th foul on Kansas. Grant Hill will shoot two. You've just given a whole new definition to not a bad seat in the house. <laughs> Hill gets a lot of arc on his uh, well, one of free the th throws, and he'll have one more. As I mentioned, a two-shot situation. Jim, one of the things about Grant Hill as a shooter, he has very poor balance on his release. Almost always, he falls forward and almost steps over the line. He's got to figure out a way to plan himself a little better. Short and right. Empty trip for Duke. Kansas with 54 seconds. That ball was tipped by Grant Hill. They're all over Tunstall. But he drives, comes up short. Tunstall over the back of Leitner. Did not get the ball for it. Goal tending against Thomas Hill. That trims it to seven. Trims it to seven. Roy Williams doesn't have to waste a timeout because the ball gets knocked away. It stops the clock for him. And he brings in Scott and Woodbury. That was a some rebound by Tunstall to get it back right over Leitner. Now what Duke wants to do is to screen Hurley and then have Leitner come back to the ball. He took a chance to go long. McCaffrey in the corner. Oh, that's off Leitner. Off Leitner. Yes, sir. And Mike Krzyzewski wants to use his last time out here. Leitner calling for it at midcourt. He saw the signal from the coach. 43 seconds remaining. Don't we'll see count right Kansas in. out. And McCaffrey, not the strongest guy in the world. You can see Tunstall came right down over him with a chop. Kansas kids play tough. Billy, let's enjoy the scene here at the Hoosier Dome. All right, Billy, show us what happened on that last situation, Duke inbounding to McCaffrey. Well, Christian Leitner is going to go long, and by doing so, he puts the inbounds play in trouble in the fact that the ball, the ball has to go to McCaffrey. Now watch, Leitner goes long, and that fools the inbounder, and that puts McCaffrey with the ball, and Kansas knocks it out. You've got, if you're Leitner, you've got to come back to the ball. Possession is more important now than the score. Kansas down seven. That ball was tipped by Hill, but Randall gets it. Down seven, one timeout remaining for the Jayhawks. Jordan on the drive, pull up jumper, oh! the glass and good, and the Kansas burns its last timeout. 34.5 seconds to go, and the Jayhawks won't go away. Come you back to the Hoosier Dome. They just accidentally ran a second and a half off the clock a moment ago. Kansas has uh, scored six unanswered in the last 37 seconds to move within five. Duke has one timeout left. The Jayhawks have used them all, Billy. 
Very critical inbounds pass here with Kansas on this run. Now, if you're going to foul anybody, you're going to want to foul Grant Hill if you can. You can see. All right, they adjusted on the clock, Billy. Mickey Crowley spotted it. Hill runs the baseline. They'd love to get the ball to Leitner and make them foul Leitner. Jamison's on him. Leitner now doubled up. Bounce pass to Hill. And he calls a timeout. He called a timeout and had one second left before it had been a 10-second violation. Smart play by Thomas Hill. 25 seconds to go. We'll be right back. The, the, the timekeeper has an itchy finger. Watch the clock start before it's even inbounded. Burned yep. another second off the clock, and Judd Heathcote and Michigan State aren't even <laughs> playing in this game. He's here, though. <laughs> Maybe that's what caused oh, it. Oh, they got, got Davis chance. on the break, and a shield by Leitner to help it. That is ball game. Mike Krzyzewski doesn't want to celebrate yet. Woodbury, they'll let him go. He missed. Hill tips it out. Jamison has it. Knocks Hill to the floor. Still can't connect. And it's Duke's basketball. And there it is. The first time I've seen Mike Krzyzewski smile. He knows he has that monkey off his back. Leitner wants it. High pass for Leitner. Sees Davis. Woodbury intercepts. Final seconds. Jordan will put up the jumper. It doesn't matter. Duke has won its first national championship. Tonight, Mike Krzyzewski has submitted himself as the best in college basketball. His Blue Devils are the national champions. He national champions, and they are savoring a moment they've long waited for. Congratulations, guys. Mike, I looked at you on Saturday after the win against UNLV, and I said, hey, can you smile a little bit? And you said, we still have another game to play with an icy glare. Well, How about now? I can smile a lot now. I, you know, we came here to win two games, and uh, I think we were much more mature than the previous teams that have come. And uh, these, kids have, these kids have had a great month of March, and it feels really good to finally win a game in April. <laughs> hey, Christian, uh, the fatigue factor trying to come back from the game against UNLV, did you feel it at all today? Personally, I know I felt it, and uh, I don't know about the rest of my teammates. I think Bob did a very good job because he has to handle the ball the whole game. And he didn't sit out once, and he just played a superb game. A lot of assists, not that many turnovers, and I'm glad for Bob. I'm very happy for Bob. Mike, you said you guys would not really feel any extra pressure knowing that you have not won the championship before. Is that really true, or is that just pregame rhetoric? No, I think it's true because these guys are too young 
they don't know what the heck happened last week. Uh, I think that, uh, and I told them, I said, you're not, you're not playing for anybody but yourselves. Don't worry about me. Billy, uh, Jim, I'm not going to go for that because I heard the guys in the background saying, we got the monkey off his back. How about that? Well, I think uh, we've worked so hard for each other. Uh, we, before the game, we said we're going to do this for each other and not for anyone else. So we're, we're ready to go, and uh, we're happy Coach did get the monkey off his back. Bobby Hurley, I, I've watched you play since you came to Duke. So much expected, great physical talent. And in the last six weeks, you have become the thinking man. Uh, 43 assists, nine turnovers, playing almost every minute of every game. Tremendous job on your part. But Christian Leitner didn't make the all-tourney team. I just, I just try to get out. <laughs> no, great job, Bobby. Thanks what do you think about the game? Well, I just think, you know, I'm just glad to be on this team and be a part of Duke basketball. And, you know, I owe everything to the guys on the team for helping me out and growing as a player. Guys, job. congratulations. You're the best. You're the best in college basketball. We'll send it upstairs to Pat O'Brien. We'll look forward to the trophy presentation in just a moment. Nice going, Mickey. Congratulations. All right, Jim Nance, thank you very much. And Billy Packer. And so our Chevrolet MVPs are for Duke, Bobby Hurley, and for Kansas, Mark Randall. Randall with 18 points, 10 rebounds, and a losing effort. And Hurley with 12 points and nine assists. And Mike Francesa, a Duke uh, team that's very young. Well, before we get to that, there isn't a person associated with college basketball that isn't happy to see Coach K finally win a national championship. He's one of the great coaches in America. And you talk about Duke being young. With what they have returning, Pat, and the recruits they have coming in, the, the big question next year is going to be, can Duke repeat? Because they will be preseason number one. How about Bobby Hurley tonight as a floor general? Two things in, this, in the second half and throughout the game. Duke's defense in the second half was tremendous against Kansas until the final minutes when they got a little tired. And Bobby Hurley, much maligned after last year's game against UNLV had a tremendous game. He is a great leader. He's fiery. He kept the team up all night when they were tired. Bobby Hurley is a great point guard and you win championships with great point guards. He's a sophomore and he's down there with his teammates and we're getting ready for the trophy presentation. Let's go to Frank Fallon, our PA announcer. Now to present the championship awards tonight, here is the chairman of the NCAA Division I Men's Basketball Committee, Mr. Jim Delaney. On behalf of the NCAA Division I Men's Basketball Tournament, please join me in congratulating the fine efforts of two teams tonight and throughout the tournament. At this time, it's my pleasure to present the 1991 National Championship Trophy to head basketball coach Mike Krzyzewski. Mike, would you say a few words on behalf of your team? Yeah. First of all, I want to thank our fans from Duke University. You're the best. I want to also congratulate Kansas on a great game. What a, what a fine basketball team. And I want to thank fans everywhere, and especially here in the state of Indiana, for putting on a fabulous Final Four. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in saluting the remaining Hello. staff members and student athletes from the National Well, Union that's it for Florida. this college basketball season. And time now, I think, about thinking about baseball. But before we leave you tonight, let us take one final look at the madness of March.
and on behalf of all of us here at CBS, and you'll see the names of the people who have been working to bring you and all the sights and sounds of the tournament. It has been our pleasure to bring you the NCAA championship and its shining moments. This is Pat O'Brien for everybody here. Good night, everybody. Final four, Christian Leitner of Duke. One shot.